hear that you, are you not planning to call plays? Yeah, I do not plan to call plays. Uh, I plan for Coach Baldwin to call plays. He's a guy who's won a national championship calling plays. I believe they had the, don't, I think, they, I'm pretty confident, I'm not a stat guy, the fifth uh, best passing offense in all of Division I AA last year, turning a triple option team into a pass heavy team, which is remarkable that he can do that in that short period of time. We are gonna run the offense that I've run in the past. We are gonna run what we run, but I truly don't believe the play caller on game day. I mean, I think that's a small piece and a big puzzle of being a head coach. But we are gonna run the same thing I ran last year, right? We're gonna collaborate a little bit, right? We're gonna add a little bit of his passing concepts. We're gonna, uh, we just hired a coach. Uh, I don't know if he's publicly released, so I don't wanna comment, but he, uh, you know, he's a guy who has knowledge from the NFL with some really good play action, half roll shot stuff that we're going to add to it. So just like I did at my last school, I got there, I got a good group of people around me. We sat down and we built an offense from the ground up. With my foundation of what I believe in it should look like, we built it from the ground up. And we're going to sit down again with the foundation that I believe in and we're going to build it from the ground up again. Was there any part of it thinking, I'm a first year head coach, I'm going to have enough on this? enough on my plate on game day. I don't need to be calling plays. 100%. 100%. Yeah. I'm not naive that I'm new to this. Anybody who says they have all the answers actually has none of the answers, right? So I'm trying to surround myself with people that have more answers that when I have a question that they can help me with. What was the most weird, Just real quick. Well, uh, Mike Norvell, he called plays at Memphis and Florida State and then Gus did too. So... I mean, was there any certain reason that you decide, like, or any lesson that you learned to, like, okay, I need to do this differently? I mean, I'm not going to get much into, into, into the past and all that stuff. I think, you know, some places don't release who the play callers are on staffs okay. uh, offensively. I don't want to do that. I want to be behind Coach Baldwin because it's going to be a collaborate effort. And uh, I know we're going to build this offense together. And, you know, I've talked ball with him multiple times. <laughs> He's one of the smartest people I've ever spoken with. Right, and I think sometimes people get lost in you know what the background in or what school you came from. Usually, if you're at a bigger, a better school, you're going to have a better offense. That's just kind of the nature of the beast, right? Just like if you're in the NFL and you've coached Tom Brady, I'm pretty sure you're a good OC as well, right? That's kind of the nature of the beast. He is a phenomenal football coach, right? I am ecstatic to have him on staff. What was the most important when you went to accumulate coaching, your coaching assistants? What were the most important factors you were looking for? Number one was great people, right? Number two was they cared about their players, right? And three was good football coach, smart. There are a ton of really smart football coaches. There are a ton. They're all over the place, right? There are some in high school, a ton. There's some in Division I, AA, some in D2. They're all over the place, great coaches. But what makes a special coach is somebody that can communicate to the player, somebody a player will play hard for, and somebody they can trust, right? To me, what I just described was just a good person, right? If you're a good person and you care about people, your players see that you care about them. So what I tried to bring in was people who care about people that are also really smart football coaches. And if you care about people, if you're good with people, as long as you put in the work, you're gonna be a good recruiter because all recruiting is is relationship building. What are the main things that you have to get accomplished between now and spring football? Now and spring football, one, we're going to have to add some pieces to the roster. Right, right now we have roughly 60, 58, depending on the day in the portal, right, how many kids on our roster. So we've got a lot, of, a lot of spots to fill. But I think the biggest thing is just the culture of the program, understanding what the work is going to look like. Like I told all of our guys when I met, you're going to have more fun than you've ever had playing football in your entire life if you do things right. But we're going to hold you accountable. And you're not going to like the pieces of when we hold you accountable. You know, my dad went to the Naval Academy. I know that there is a fine line between right and wrong. And that's how I operate. And if you do things right, you're going to have more fun money in the country. If you do things wrong, right, you're probably not going to like me the first few times until we start doing things right. And that's really the culture we're trying to build is we're trying to build good men, trying to build good people that work hard, and have a lot of fun, fall in love with the process of work, like I said in my press conference. So the most important thing, yes, we need to add to the roster, but the most important thing is the culture of what the work looks like. Because winning teams practice a certain way, look a certain way, work a certain way, that's the number one thing we're trying to get to. And how do the players in general, not what you said to them, or they said to you, but in general, how do you feel that they've 
responded to the message and maybe feel a little more upbeat headed into spring ball? Yeah, I think they're excited. You know, they all leave my meeting room. Most of me might leave the meeting room excited, but I also know that, you know, most, most kids, if they didn't leave exciting, weren't going to tell the head coach they weren't excited. <laughs> so, I mean, for the most part, I feel like our guys are excited. I think they're energized. Right? I think they're ready for the challenge because that was part of it. I challenged them all that we're about to put in a lot of work. Right? We're, this is going to be the hardest thing you've ever done. So I think they're excited for the challenge. Right? But uh, you're going to have to ask them their real opinion. Guess. I mean, they may tell me whatever I want to hear right now. Do you, have any, do you have an idea of what your roster looks like, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, just because of all the turnover going back and forth? I think it's hard. I think th at spring we'll get a better clue when I get to see kids in person. I think if I commented right now, I'd be pre too premature. A lot of your message these first couple weeks has been uh, activating the Valley, getting everybody together. A lot of your previous stops have been college towns where game day is the focus. How do you get Sun Devil Stadium the focus of everybody's Saturday? I think excitement. That's it, excitement. Make it fun to come to a game. Like I grew up, like I said, I grew up tailgating and kid, little kids used to be around dodging cars, throwing footballs, right? And that was the thing to do on Saturday. Yeah, was it before the town got bigger and bigger and bigger, right? The outlaws were here. I don't know if many people know who the outlaws <laughs> are, but the outlaws were in town before the Arizona Cardinals, right? And they played right here. And I used to come watch the outlaws. I used to come watch the Sun Devils, right? It's can we create that environment back that this is the thing to do on a Saturday? And that's on me to make it exciting again. That's on me to connect the valley to where they feel connected to this place, that on Saturday, they want to go support our players. Working with Sean, how has that process gone? You know, a guy who's obviously been here for the last couple of years, but how, how has he helped kind of you in your onboarding process? Oh, unbelievable. A guy who, who knows, you know, the strengths, knows the weaknesses. Uh, he's done a remarkable job helping me, even with the recruiting board, with the current roster. I mean, he's just been a blessing to me. I mean, he, he escalated our process by months. What's the dynamic like between you two? I mean, obviously he's a guy who's at the, the head job for you know nine, ten weeks or so, and then just you know staying on staff. You know, but what's that dynamic like? Oh, it's phenomenal. He's a great person, and I think that's the key. Is you know I said it earlier. I want great people on our staff. You know, that's the number one priority for this staff was great people. I want people to drop their kids off here and say, man, these people are going to help my kids in life. If they have an issue, they're going to be able to come up to my coach's office. They're going to be able to do these things, and these, my kid is taken care of. And I think Sean is, I mean, the definition of that. So I have just honor and a privilege that I get to work alongside of him. How do you approach a new coach addressing um, a team? We, we've seen recently a case where, you know, you know, Hey, I'm bringing my luggage. If you don't like it, go to the portal. How, how did you handle that? What? Yeah, for me, it's about building relationships. I think every time a new coach comes in, it's a fresh start for guys. I think, you know, kids make mistakes in their lives. That's part of being an 18 to 22-year-old, right? I think it's our job as coaches to help kids achieve their dreams. I really do believe that, right? It's our job to give them a chance, right? And uh, to me, every kid on this team is a fresh start. I'm going to help try to get them to achieve their dreams, achieve their goals, because I firmly believe, and I'm a living testament to it, every day I would wake up and go to work and try to help the person I worked for be the very best at whatever they could do. Because I knew if this person becomes the very best at what he's doing, he's gonna have an opportunity to progress, and that helps me to have an opportunity to progress. I believe the same thing with our players. If I can do everything I can to help our players achieve the things they want to achieve, it's going to help me keep my dream going for the next 35 years. Because if they achieve their goals, they're going to help me achieve mine. And I think that's our number one job as a coach, is to help our guys achieve what they want to achieve in life. Kenny, how do you overcome in recruiting this pending NCAA investigation and whatever the sanctions might be? Yeah, to me, I think for us, it's focusing on the things we can focus on. And what we can focus on is bringing good, good kids into the program, bringing kids that want to work into the program, bringing kids that are talented into the program, right? Bringing kids, you know, from the Valley back to the program, right? And I think for us, that's what we're focused on. You know, the last pillar in this program is success. And we define that as just being the very best you can be at whatever you're currently doing. So the only thing I can control right now is being the very best at what I'm doing right now. And that's what I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be the very best interview any of y'all have ever had <laughs> right now. Penny, I know it varies from position group to position group, but what is the general archetype of the transfer portal player that you're trying to bring in here? One, good kid, 
that works hard, that's driven, that's number one. When you look at the success, I've been blessed to be at some places that have rebuilt programs uh, through the portal or, or added a lot of pieces that were necessary through the portal, right? And I think those, those traits were the most important traits. Good kids who loved ball, who just wanted to work. And sometimes, like I said, kids need second chances. And uh, sometimes for us, you know, a clean slate is all a kid needs to be successful. And uh, there's a kid, a former player of mine is the definition of that, where he just needed another chance. And he got that other chance with a new staff and the, the rest is history. His success level will probably be a first round draft pick now, just because he got a fresh start. Start. Sorry. What led you to your defensive coordinator? I played him. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty simple. I played him and I watch uh, on Wednesday nights, I watch third downs. And I don't think I went home until about 4 a.m. on Wednesday night because it was an absolute pain in the butt to go verse. You're talking about pressure. I mean, he got he has seven dudes walked up on the line of scrimmage on third and six plus. He brings house blitz. He brings zero blitz. He drops them out on base downs. He rushes six. He'll simulate pressure. He'll bring internal pressure, drop out. If you look at the TFL, if you study, what I believe in in defense is chaos rate. Do you create chaos? Chaos to an offense. Don't let an offense create comfort. Chaos. His chaos rate, when you watch the tape, it's like every three to four plays, chaos is occurring, right? And he does it sound. And I think that's the challenge is, can you create chaos sound? And if I'm a player and I watch his tape, I'm like, dang, I want to play in that because I want to be the dude who creates chaos. So for me, it's I don't want to play him. And I know if I were a player, I'd want to play in it. There's been a lot of frustration, guys. Okay, I've asked enough. Does anyone else have? In terms of the Sun Devil walk in Camp T, can fans expect that to come back this year? Uh, I don't know yet. I, I believe in the. I believe in Camp T. I don't know what that's going to look like. Just me being born and raised here. You know, I'm a huge Camp T guy. Uh, Sun Devil walk. I'm gonna. I'm gonna explore different things that we can do. Like I say, I want. I want this game day atmosphere to be fun and exciting for our fans. So I'm still looking into different things that we can do that could try to make this an experience for people to get out of bed and come have a phenomenal weekend, come have a phenomenal Saturday watching your Sun Devils, and then hop over and watch the Arizona Cardinals, right? Let's make it a back-to-back -back football weekend for the Valley.